guys. Uh, we have the semifinal between Firebat and Kibler, uh, almost ready to go here. Um, now, uh, this should be a pretty interesting one. Um, we, we really get to uh, test if Kibler's uh, mid-range type of approach to this tournament is really going to fly in this format, as uh, Firebat is bringing the aggression. Uh, who do you got to give it to? Are you favoring any one side? Uh, hmm... I think I like Firebat. I mean, I picked Kibler to win the tournament, but I think I just kind of like the triple mech thing. Like, you know, if this is basically the gauntlet of can your lineup handle aggro, it's not just one aggro deck, it's three. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't like, you know, okay, his aggro deck got a win, now let's play some control games. It's like, you're playing against aggro every single game, and you have to beat it three times out of five. So... Yeah. Whether that's going to happen or not, you know, if there's really no board clears from the Paladin or the Priest. He's going to need to get ahead on board early. And who knows? I think with Paladin, that's pretty doable. Priest, I have my doubts about. Shaman was also pretty slow from Kibler's end. So I think I like Firebat. I feel like in the match we just saw between Firebat and uh, Life Coach, uh, the only match that Life Coach won was with the Priest when he kind of pushed those strong mid-game creatures consistently. And I feel that feel like that's what all of Kibler's decks are actually doing. Um, I think the, the match would have ended up uh, far differently if, uh, if Firebat played differently and not played the uh, the Jeeves, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, Life Coach kind of just had that one, and I feel like uh, Kibler might not really be out of this yet. I feel like the uh, a well-constructed mid-range deck in this format can still pull it off. Yeah, I'm pretty interested to see kind of how Kibler's strategies will do, because obviously you do have to consider aggro in these formats. You know it's going to be a popular strategy. Mm -hmm. At least a few people are going to do it. And so you, you need your decks to be prepared to beat it. But I think the main thing is you don't really expect anybody to just literally have three mech decks. Uh, it doesn't seem that outrageous. Um, I think uh, originally we were talking about some of the strategies available, and you just mentioned you know you just make three decks with ten one drops in, in each, and that's good to go, right? Yeah, that's... That strategy, you know, it's not 10 one drops, it turns out. It's more like two and three drops, but, you know, curve out to Fell Reaver, beat him up. Mm -hmm. It's been working so far. It has. It has been working. Uh, well, all right. Uh, we didn't really get to see much of how the mage plays out, and uh, most of what we saw were just interesting cards that don't seem to particularly work much better with mage than any other class. We saw the um, the questing adventure. We saw the mana worm. We saw the mana addict, but we didn't see any spells. So yeah, I don't think we saw a single spell actually. So maybe <laughs> yeah, we saw so many cards that synergize with cheap stuff. Maybe he really was just thinking like, oh, we saw arcane missiles, but mm. uh, maybe he was just thinking the spare parts are just going to kind of carry those cards to being viable. But I feel like if he, if he draws those early, you know, like Questing Adventure and Mana Attic, they're really not that great on their own. Is there actually, like, any mage spells that are legal? That are any good? Besides Arcane Missiles, uh... I'm fired up my first dra point. You can use Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath? In, oh, yeah, because it costs one less. One yeah, less. Yeah, in fact, I actually, I have, like, a bet with, uh admirable that Dragon's Breath will not win a single tournament from the time it was released until the World Championships this year. Okay. That, that was a thousand dollar tournament. I don't think we actually specified it had to be a constructed tournament. Uh -oh. So hopefully that's not in his deck. But if it is, I'm going to argue, you know, well, this wasn't a constructed tournament. I was talking about its constructed viability. Well, I have seen a Dragon's Breath be somewhat effective in decks with uh, Malagos combos and Arcane Explosions, where you like uh, play yeah. from behind, proc your block, play like an eight mana Malagos, free Arcane Explosion, yeah, and then free Dragon Breath for like twenty damage. It's like that deck where you intentionally go into your deck builder and build a worse Freeze Mage. Yeah, that's the one. That's yeah, the one. I, I I saw that. I mean. Eh, 
I, I don't right. think it's a very great card, but in this format where you can't play any other burn spells, maybe that's what you got to use. All right, well, let's let's go through the spells here. So we have Arcane Missiles. Ice Lance is not legal. Mirror Image is not legal. Frostbolt is not legal. Unstable Portal is not legal. Arcane Explosion is not legal. Flame Cannon is not legal. Arcane Intellect is not legal. Um, I believe there's no secrets that are legal. Uh, fra Spellbender? Oh, spell Spellbender. Yeah. You can That's play right. Spellbender, but you can't play Mad Scientist. So it's like you'd have yeah. to literally play the card Spellbender. Yep. Frost Nova is not legal. Um, Flame Waker for more spell synergy is not legal. Uh, Kona Cold is not legal. Echo of Medivh is not legal. Uh, Firebat. Uh, Fireball, Polymorph, Blizzard, not legal. Dragon's Breath is legal. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So you have Dragon's Breath, Spellbender, and Arcane Missiles as me. Those are the only spells? Those are the only spells that you can play. Wow. I mean, there's also a chance he kind of screwed up put in some spells and thought he could, and then those are now Magma Ragers? Perhaps. Could have happened. I think more, more like he was just thinking, okay, you get Clockwork Homes, you get Tinker Towns, you can't play Mech Yeti. Nope. So you only have four sources of spare parts. Uh, yeah. What about... Um, what about Toshley? He's five attack. Yeah. Does he have any other one? No. A spare part, probably. Yeah. Yep. Nope. So it's it's just going to be those few spells in his mage deck that has some spell synergy cards in it. Well, we have uh, quite a match here to open up with. We have uh, Paladin from Firebat, Shaman from Kibler, uh, two of uh, perhaps the strongest class in tournament so far. Man, Firebat is nailing down these uh, these mech <laughs> curves. Yeah, these mech workers, man. But Kibler... Playing this pretty well. Uh, what do you well, think of the, uh, actually, the Bolt versus uh, Rockbiter there? I think he was thinking, okay, I'm just gonna totem next turn. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like lightning bolting first, just get the overload out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, it does cost him a totem on this turn, or rather a haunted creeper. But then you'd overload yourself next turn. Maybe yeah. it worked out a little worse for him, but I think the, the idea was correct. before Because he didn't know he was going to top deck that. Right. And it's also important to note that the totems are like a lot less valuable when you have uh, far fewer ways to pump them up with attack. Right. There's no... There's no Whoa! Real Blood Knight! Oh, man. The unfortunate thing here is he's going to probably Earthshock that Blood Knight. Yeah. And he won't have it for that Scarlet. Crusader. Hmm. Well, Only thing about that lightning storm. Lightning storm isn't too bad. It has the potential to clear the board if it hits the uh, spider tank for three. But I never want a lightning storm on turn five. It always feels so bad. Uh, yeah. You always want to uh, do a two overload card on turn seven, so you could have six mana for perhaps another fire elemental or just a fire elemental. Ooh, he did he go for it? No, he didn't. Okay, he just totem. So I, I like this play. Like you said, you really want to use that fire elemental on turn six. Unfortunately, kind of like I mentioned, Scarlet Crusader now gets a lot better. Okay. And Firebat's basically going to play around fire elemental with the Coghammer. Yeah, Firebat can instantly kill a fire elemental. The fire elemental actually uh, basically trades for a weapon charge in the three two. Which kind of sucks. What do you think about killing totems in this format? Like, it, it's much, it's much less important than it normally is. But do you think it's still important to just keep the board clear? I mean, it's just a healing totem. I don't even know if the, if there's that much thought being put into it. I think it's just when you play against shaman, you just yeah. know that you want to kill all the totems. It's almost like a habit at this point, where it's right. like, okay, totem, kill it. But, okay. Uh, yeah. What does he go with here? He's probably going to go with the Crusader and the Harvest Golem. Yeah, I think the only real question is if you trade, and I think you kind of have to respect Lightning Storm here. You yeah. haven't really presented a good Lightning Storm this game, so you can't eliminate it from your opponent's range. 
so this is pretty in line with his place so far. He's just going to try to control the board. If he gets to Tyrion and there's no Hex, that's great. Uh, unfortunately, Kibler can draw the card Hex because it is legal. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it kind of works here with Earthshock out of the way. It's kind of hard to really deal with that. And uh, he's going to have to get Hex for Tyrion. Tyrion's one of those cards that if he if he's not like hard removed, he's just wins winning the game by itself. Yep. Yeah, Kibler doesn't have that great of a hand. I mean, it's the storms should be good. Yeah, it might I, be a card that Firebat won't play around very much. Kind of can't play around it. Oh, and there's the hex. Wow. Yeah, at this point, I think Kibler is actually. Pretty favored to win because of how well his cards are going to line up. Mm -hmm. um, he might do. S he might have to do something crazy like double storm. Double storm would clear this board. Yeah, I think it has to be double storm. Ooh. Oh, but you really want a double storm with that guy. Yeah, you do. Well, there's not much that you can do. I, I don't think I don't think one lightning storm is good enough. So yeah, really, you have. You have to look at Double Storm, or if you really want to do an Alakir play. Yeah, I mean, Alakir here is actually extremely weak, I think. Yeah. It, you probably just go face, or maybe you clear the yep. Harvest Golem? No, because then you'd want to clear... I don't know, I think Double Storm is actually it. Uh, you just yeah, kind if you, of... If you do play Alakir, you do go face, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like, I feel like Alec here is going to help you stabilize later. Like, if you just go for a pretty slow game here. Of course, the Double Storm into Hex on Tyrion would line up extremely well. He doesn't know that for sure, but... Uh, so it looks like... I think this is pretty interesting. I guess he's setting up, he just wants to use one Storm next turn. And that's going to work out really well, because he gets to go uh, Unbound, Hex, and Lightning Storm. Yep. Um, and the Undown can't be killed from the board. Um, Fire will have four damage. Yeah. Well, he might, he'll just, he might get he'll just kill, have two. Oh, he'll, yeah, he'll have uh, the two and the cog hammer. Yeah. With a spare part, it might it might happen, though. So the Divine playing. Shield? Plays? Nope. Wrecked. He's playing around Hex. Hmm. I think now we are going to see the double lightning storm there. Yeah. I mean, it guaranteed clears where I think this works out even better for Kibler. I mean, Firebat probably feels pretty good. Play around hacks and stuff, but you didn't play around the double lightning storm. Yeah, and then he's going to have to play Tyrion, which is going to be terrible. Yeah, so... Kibler navigated this pretty well. I mean, he... He had to play a really bad Alec here, but it set him up for these really powerful turns later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he is now uh, in quite Ooh. dominant position. Ooh, the Fell Reaver is quite nice. That lets you yeah. bait out the Hex. And you can kill that Unbound if you want. I think he might just go face. Looks like he's killing it, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's baiting out the Hex here, and then he's trying to just carry the game away with Tyrion, which... Could work. Very good strategy, yeah. Yeah. Unless Kibler gets another hex. Yeah, I mean Kibler. Kibler's facing down eleven here, so it's very unlikely that you you emperor. Yeah, and he only got six mills, which in the grand scheme of things probably won't matter at all since this game won't go to fatigue most likely. Right. He gets it a might... lot of info. Yeah, if he gets another fell reaver, it might. But other than that, no. Yeah, Kibler sees that and now he's thinking oh no How, yeah, what went wrong even if he gets the hex here he's still kind of behind on the board because there's going to be so many small yeah, creatures the, that he can't deal with the one ones are just going to stack up until the game ends he actually has no way to remove them now alright well Nazdormu doesn't seem too bad it kind of absorbs damage uh, it seems pretty bad Everything seems bad because they just can't take off the divine shield. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, that Fell Reaver top deck was probably the only card Fireback could have drawn the win. I mean, I guess he could have drawn them in the opposite order, gotten his Tyrion Hex, and then won the game off Fell Reaver, but it's definitely better the other way around. Yeah, Tyrion, I mean, he has to be Silence, he has to be Hex. Something really bad has to happen to him, because even if he's killed through damage, the Ashbringer will often just end up uh, with you ahead, or you winning the game. What do you think about, uh, I guess, going face leaves you open to a top deck Hex, but I was thinking maybe you could just go face, set up lethal. Mm-hmm. Like, but there's very few things that can actually punish that with both storms out of the way. Yeah, he would have just won the game. No, he had lethal uh, anyway with the muster and the micro machine yeah, getting pumped yeah, up he, by one. Yep. So with the jungle missing, this is going to be lethal. Yep. If he can get all the attacks off, which he didn't, he missed lethal. We've seen this happen more than once. Yep. <laughs> and now he can't even play muster. Wow, that was a pretty good Nazdor move. That now Stormu saved the game technically. <laughs> now he can top deck Hex and Harrison or so. If he top deck Harrison into Hex, no, no. So that's Don't gonna do anything. it. All right, good. So Firebat's off to a good start, but I feel like that was probably his most powerful deck. Right, and and he did he did have a, a good game with it, though at the same time it was uh, against uh, a tough matchup as well from Gibbler. So uh, we'll have to see. I still feel it's uh, it's very, very even in this case. I know you have the aggro lined up to win, but um, I got my faith just as much in, in Kibler's decks. Actually, probably more in Kibler's decks because we, ha we still have to see that mage take a win. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, if it gets to a 2-0 situation where the mage just has to win one out of three, it I probably feel like will. the mech warper scenario is going to come up at least once where it's just kind of like, right. doesn't matter what class I'm playing, here's my mechs, go. I have to feel like, though, you know, Firebat's done well, and I like his strategy. And going back to the 15 minutes thing, they didn't have much time to pick these decks, but Shaman has to be better than Mage, 100%. Right. right. Well, Mech Warper strikes again. Holy cow, man. It seems about every game is like this. <laughs> yeah, but it is the Hunter deck he drew it with, and there is a Zombie Chow. So Kibler's... Oh, and Zombie Chow coined Velen's... Is basically what you what you want. Yeah, it's like a GG. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be like the opposite of of what you expect here, which is for Fire to run away with the game with the Mech Warper. It's going to be Kibler running away with Coin Velens. Uh, I think he might just play the Shadow Boxer though. Mm, what does that really do though? It leaves you with Actually. a weaker board. You you save the coin. Hmm. You might play the um, the technician as well. Yeah, I I don't think the Velens is obviously the best play. I think it's a it's, I think a it's about as good as the other ones. Yeah. The 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 Velens and the Blackwing technician are pretty similar plays. This one leaves you with a four health. Four four, which is you know comparable, but yeah, but it is a it's a priest four four, a damage right. one. So like you can heal it up if you need to. Uh, the important thing, and maybe what Kibler was considering, is does contest Spider Tank. And, uh, tech, well, it, it would contest the Tinker Town anyway because there's no mech, so. So I think this lined up better, uh, and now he gets to develop the Technician anyway. Mm -hmm. Pretty smart play with the Velens. It was very slightly better. Had he not done that, had he done the opposite, what would he have had here? He would have had a 5. Um, how much damage is that thing taken? It starts with five, 7, six, five, six. six. Yeah. Three, no. It'd be a 5, 6. No, because... Oh, right, 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 because it only takes that one hit. Yeah. Yeah. So a 5, 6, or a 4, 1, and a 3, 5. So yeah, yeah this, and, this turns out to be marginally better. And uh, against sure. Hunter, really what you want is not only... Not only just, like, healthy stuff... But you want multiple, yeah. yeah. You want multiple attacking units. You don't want one big one because the hunter is just going to spam a bunch of small stuff. Mm -hmm. He could go for a fifty-fifty shadow boxer this turn. Uh, I think he's going to go for a thirty-three percent shadow boxer. Was that the wrong order? No, because he, yeah, he has to heal before trading in, so it is a thirty-three percent. Still worth going for. Very good stuff. 
Yep. Um, it does leave Firebat with a mech on board, and that uh, creates uh, some options here. I was yeah. actually hoping to see the Tinkertown played first. Would that have mattered at all? You resolve your RNG effects first. Uh, so he could have used the spare part over playing a micro machine to get. Ah, uh, no, it Take wouldn't it down matter. A three, three. Yeah, but then your opponent has a four-one to trade into yeah. a four-four. So yeah. nah, nothing would have changed his play. Right. All right. Sorry. Well, if uh, Kibler gets the fifty-fifty here, he's going to be in really good shape. Just going face. He doesn't care. Doesn't even care. Yeah, I mean, I, I like this too. He's basically uh, develops more units again, and the only thing that really punishes this is juggler on leash. You already saw one juggler. Well, there's the other one, but uh, we're probably going to end up seeing it this turn. Yeah, I mean, if he had juggler on leash, especially with a spare part, he could create a bunch of one ones, and the priest doesn't have a great way of killing those. You know, it's just like you have to deal with them each individually. There's no Holy Nova, there's no Light Bomb. That juggle hitting face uh, certainly doesn't help the situation at all. Firebat's just perpetually behind. Um, yeah. I, I just don't see how he catches up in this game at all. Yeah, I, I think this comes back to I mean, Kibler had the Zombie Chow. Firebat kind of missed a one drop. He doesn't have too many in his deck. It's more sitting around twos, and Kibler went second, which I think mm -hmm. was actually. In the context of this game, it was a lot better. Yeah, he's able to uh, play those super powerful three drops rather than a two drop that just trades in whatever. I mean, I feel like this is the matchup you want, though, if you're Kibler. It's like if you ask what he'd like to queue his priest into, it's probably Hunter. Right. So yeah, things, you're not vulnerable to just getting chipped away. Things went pretty well just from, from just the start of this match uh, yeah. for Kibler. Yeah, Firebat realizes there's there's absolutely no chance he's coming back from this dire situation. And uh, with that, Kibler evens it up. Uh, score is tied at 1-1. One one. Um, more importantly, uh, Firebat has to win with Hunter and Mage, which seems like it would be perhaps more of a struggle than um, winning with Paladin and Shaman. Yeah, I think Paladin and Shaman overall are better classes, but maybe that Shaman deck, we, we have seen it's pretty slow. Yeah, uh, maybe that struggles just against the mech theme in general. Uh, despite being an overall stronger class, he did draw lightning bolt and rockbiter, and still drop the game. He draw he drew lightning bolt, rockbiter, and two storms, and still dropped the game to the mech paladin. I don't know if that's really what you want though. Like he drew two storms, but he drew two storms when he didn't even need one storm. I think you want like an unbound elemental. You want the fire guard destroyer just to Ooh. like pressure down. Oh, that was, that was probably like a fireball or something, yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah, like I mentioned, I think he put in spells, and those spells were not legal. Yeah. So, uh, he did put in Soot Spear into his deck, but I, I mean, this is the start you want if you're Kibbler. He got one into two, he went first with Zombie Chow. Mm -hmm. You know, Firebat might be really good at drawing Mech Warper, but Brian Kibbler is even better at drawing Zombie Chow. Is so. he? I think it's about the same. Like. They both have it every time. Yeah, literally every time. <laughs> so ridiculous. Here comes Arcane Missiles. Um, yeah, I actually don't think he good. wanted... I don't think he wanted to kill the, the Haunted Creeper. Um, Maybe. Yeah, I think, so. I think he did, actually. Okay. Because now it doesn't directly trade. In yeah, the other case... What it have anyway? You no, know, well, it, it can attack okay, to okay. the Mech Warper, and then the two threaten, so it requires you to hero power. Fair enough. Well, I mean, the Arcade Missiles, more importantly, did kill the Zombie Chow, so... I feel like if if Firebat had one more mana, this game could just be over. And, and Kibler kind of begrudgingly played that Aldor. He's like, I'm going to regret this later. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kibler's hand is... Oh, wow, Blinktron, how about that? That's some aggression right there. Yeah. Just throwing what? in whatever mechs you can. Is it whatever? I think it's not a bad card. If he's playing the type of like uh, steamroll tempo mech synergistic deck, if you're ahead in that situation, even marginally so, and you get initiative with a weapon as well, I think that's game over. Yeah, well, to be fair, when I was considering the card just for constructed purposes, I, I did the math, and I mean, the average damage it does is 
pretty reasonable. It, it was like, you know, five-ish. And that's about a burden spell for five mana, and you get mm -hmm. the unit, so... If, you know, if you're in a limited format where you can't play burn spells and you want burn, it's pretty much what you go with. Yeah. Here, Magma Rager punishes uh, Kibler once again. Yeah. Well, he's got the uh, the backup, so he'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, Kibler drawn to the, uh, the, the Blackman Technician was a really big draw. It made it so not only did he not have to play the Twilight Drake, which would have been a... Uh, similarly strong creature, but he does get to keep the dragon in hand, which uh, lets him have that uh, hold mechanic from the Corruptor in the following turn. Yeah. Now, Firebat doesn't trust his RNG. Didn't go for the weapon. But this can test the board, but again, I feel like if, if Kibler just stays even, he's probably ahead. Uh, he's got initiative right now on board, and he's at 30 health against the aggro deck. What do you think about uh, Twilight Drake and the Haunted Creeper just to get rid of two cards? It's about the same strength on board, and you're not really benefiting much from reducing the cost. Uh, oh, I see. Going face. I, I like this. I like that, too. I like that, too, yeah. Yeah. I was actually just thinking about going face. I mean, when you're at 30, taking 8 isn't nearly as big of a deal. So, well, yeah, that's I mean, not the weapon what, uh, you want. Is that an eagle horn bow? I don't know what it is, but it's got a death rattle effect, I it's, believe. It's three two with an effect, so I think it's an eagle horn bow. Okay. Uh, it could be a power mace, right? It could be no, because it's a death rattle. Oh, the death rattle has the skulls, right? It's the lightning yeah. bolt. Yeah, the I think you're right. So that's one off lethal, <laughs> just straight up. Uh, so, I mean, now Firebat's kind of like, how do I win? Mm -hmm. What what have I done? <laughs> yeah, the, um, the Blinktron's a really good card if you're winning even slightly. But if you're losing, I feel like it's almost always uh, a liability. And I think uh, this is another example of that, where uh, just giving his opponent more damage when he's about to die really doesn't help the situation at all. Yeah, and one interesting thing is with this Fel Reaver, I mean, it's pretty much a loss game for Firebat. And now I think there's actually a lot of merit in just burning your opponent's cards, seeing what they're playing. I think I would I would not play Hungry Dragon here. I'd go for uh, Haunted Creeper and Muster, even though it overrides your weapon. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to see more cards in my opponent. It's so important in this format. But ha Hungry Dragon, it's going to be, so... I guess he does have a good idea. Yeah. Like we talked about, there's only three spells you can even play. So it like, takes a little bit to figure out that, though. So, like, well, yeah, but Kibler can literally search that, you know, mm -hmm. between these games or before the games. So you know exactly what you need to play around. You know exactly what their deck can contain. And, I mean, the rest of it's pretty much just mechs. Yeah, it's not, not much of a surprise factor. In fact, now that I think about it, it's probably the Blinktron that really is the only surprise in the deck at all. Uh, you've yeah. already seen the uh, the Mana Attic, you've already seen a few of the other cards, and uh, really the Blinktron is now something that you maybe might choose to play around, but the rest, uh, pretty uh, pretty vanilla. And yeah. uh, now we're in the opposite situation where uh, Kibler gets that second point first, and uh, you have to favor him here, don't you? I think you do, yeah. I mean, I set myself up really nice. I predicted Kibler to win the tournament. I predicted Firebat to win this match. So, so either cool. way, I win. Okay. Uh, okay. But, I mean, when you're up 2-1, I think regardless of how bad the matchups are, the matchups have to be... Uh, they have to be worse than 30% for you to actually be unfavored overall. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a 30-70 into a 30-70 to be, you know, not the favorite. So I'd say Kibler's probably slightly favored, but... I mean, I think if any deck was going to drop to these aggro decks, it was going to be the Shaman. Okay. And well, Firebat has a really Firebat. good hand. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be a really big Micro Machine very quickly. Probably see the Earthshock here. Oh, no, right. Uh, he had the Haunted Creeper as well. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's opening hand was Haunted Creeper, Double Earthshock. Looks like he picks up the other Fire Guard Destroyer. I think he threw one away in his opener and a Rock Biter. 
Uh, Rock Fighter's pretty nice. Yeah, Kibler actually has ways to deal with this. I mean, and then Feral Spirit kind of stabilize. This is not looking too bad. He can actually he can clear the board if he wants. Uh, he could also just leave one behind. I feel like he was clear, probably. Especially if you're aware of Metal Tooth Leaper being a card. Yeah, I think the the real question is, do you want a Haunted Creeper at 1-1, one, one, or do you want two 1-1s? One, Looks uh, like he wants the 1-1 one, one with Death Rattle still available. It's yeah. a better investment in the game. I think he misplayed that, though. He took an extra damage, right? Oh, I, I didn't quite see. He took three from the Cogmaster. Oh, I mean, okay. Regardless of which one you silence, it becomes a 1-1. One, one, uh, right. You take its effect away. Right. So he took one extra damage, which probably won't be that relevant. But who knows? All right. Well, here comes the Metal Tooth Leaper and the Beast of Sergeant tackling down that Fire Guard Destroyer plate on turn one. Which is uh, a very unusual situation. You basically never see this. But at yeah. the same time, it's 7 damage face. So. Yeah, I mean... So trading here, he's thinking, I'm going to play Fell Reaver next turn. That could carry the game. I should just set up for the most clean Fell Reaver possible. But at the same time, he's thinking, okay, wait a second. Fell Reaver does 8. This thing does 7. I could just take the 7 now. But... I think he realizes if he doesn't go for the trade, you kind of just get outvalued. You're left with a 3-3. Your opponent mm -hmm. gets to have that Fire Guard Destroyer still, and your Fell Reaver is just considerably weaker. Uh, Here yeah, we have the situation again where Kibler really doesn't want to play anything because he wants that turn 6 Fire Elemental, and I don't blame him at all. I think not playing anything is actually the, the play to make. Yeah. And now, going kind of going back to how much you care about totems, I think you go face. Mm -hmm. Totems do not do much in this format. There's no flame tongue. You can play Argus, but that's you know you can't play around that right now because your opponent has multiple minions out, uh, and every bit of face damage is going to matter from here on out. All right. Well, uh, looks like Killer's going to take that eight damage hit, which is going to be extremely significant. But he might not take anything after that. And he's going to be able to taunt up pretty nicely and probably maintain the board. Uh, wait, oh no! Oh. He didn't play the spider tank! Misplay. Or he wants to get that hero power in. <laughs> he just wants the hero power. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, I think a 5-4 is probably better than a hero power, but... Uh, I guess he's thinking, hey, five more of those and uh, this game's over. Yeah. Be interesting if that wins him the game, the the hero power decision. Well, Both I guess kill double commands. Three. Both kill commands um, got burned. Yeah, I think you actually go face here. Oh man, you've nice. seen you've seen one unleash, but an unleash would end the game off the top. Whew. Would it end it? Oh, yeah, yeah six, you'd have exactly yeah. enough yeah, exactly to six. get through. So. Yeah, I think going face allows him... I, We can't see how many cards there are left, but maybe if he top decks something low-costing, he can burn out enough cards that Firebat's basically just out of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I well, wonder if the 5 for not being developed is going to matter. but It looks like Firebat's considering saving the juggler for a turn where he has another creature to play, or perhaps the other unleash. Yeah, I... Don't think you can really be that optimistic. Oh gosh, he is. Looks like you can be that optimistic. All right. Well, yeah, I think I would have liked playing the juggler because your opponent. Oh wow. Well, if your opponent has a second storm. Then yes, holding it's great. I I was I was thinking your opponent already has to trade on board. He has to put a lot of his minions into yours. Uh, your opponent actually wouldn't have a way to kill the juggler because he has to put the fire elemental into the spider mm -hmm. tank. And then three damage into the uh, yeah. into the Fell Reaver, leaving him with only one to deal with your juggler. All right. Well, here the Fire Elemental does have to trade because you do need that that taunt up. I feel uh, you can't really close out this game too soon. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. He doesn't have two turn lethal, so, and he's at a very critical amount of seven. Oh wow. Looks like he's going to try. So a bow here would end the game pretty much, but yeah. 
a... I don't think that face hit's going to matter too much in the grand scheme of things. I think it made him more susceptible to a bow this turn. Though mm. I guess a bow might have ended in any way, because he only needs to get one bow hit through. So four damage would end the game, but no. And... Yeah, I mean, now... You have to get two attacks in with that fire elemental, but you can't. Well, you're still not dead dead. Like, you have three turns. Yeah, I think what you need state. to do here is actually go face, play Mana Titan, and hex the, uh, the knife juggler. Mm -hmm. I, I guess this works out too. So now, now you have two turns, but now Firebat has two draws. And Firebat's deck is really small, and we haven't really seen a bow, I don't think. Unless I um, miss one of the mills, but we haven't we haven't seen the unleash. Um, oh, the Alakir is huge. Yeah, well, that's not game. No, he's he's still one off lethal. Um, he does have quite a few cards that do produce lethal though, so he can draw into it. I mean, you have to play not a storm move, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He was thinking about hero power, but the hero power you're still on a bow top deck to win, so it doesn't change your outs at all. And. Okay. Alakir protects him, and now what? What can he draw though? Can he draw anything? He already used both Kilkmans are gone. Unleash, I think, is enough, isn't Un it? Unleash would do it. Yeah, yeah. That's he has one left of those. Yeah. Nope. Nope. And that's the mech he, he can, you can draw a taunt part. Oh, a taunt. That's right. Yeah. No, he, he just... can't. He's he's at one. The uh, totem will kill him. Oh, that's it. That's gonna well, do it. He would die to the one-one totem if he drew a taunt. Kibler barely gets through, but he does get through. He Kibler got through. moves on to the finals. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be playing against uh, Forsen uh, shortly enough, and uh, here we are. We actually have uh, quite of uh, quite a variety for our final. Even though we saw uh, aggressive decks kind of dominate the tournament all throughout, uh, Kibler kind of showed us that it's not really all about that. You can make it work with mid range. So we are going to see the very aggressive force and lineup against Kibler's very mid-rangey uh, lineup in the finals. Uh, they're playing for some uh, some pretty big bucks. First place gets two thousand bucks. Second place gets one thousand bucks. So uh, yeah, a uh, bit of money there. Also, the um, the format is a little bit different for the final. Um, right now, uh, in in the time we have off, the players are going to have to construct a fourth deck. Uh, and it will be playing that because it will uh, it will be a best of seven rather than a best of five. Um, now, what do you think the the players will really have to gain from this? Like, uh, you know, Forsen, he just played three aggressive decks. You can probably just play a fourth aggressive deck. Uh, and Kibler, he can probably just do the same thing if he wants. Do you think that the players will do that rather than kind of uh, maybe having a new dynamic in their lineup? I think... Maybe Kibler could go for something like an anti aggro deck because he knows Kibler's decks or he knows Forsen's decks. Right. Forsen knows his, but Forsen's kind of committed to this aggro strategy. Uh, he'll probably just add a fourth deck, whatever he feels is good. I would think uh, Forsen might add Paladin, and because also they get to, they've had time to reconsider what's best. Right. They had 15 minutes initially. Now they have, they've had basically a day to think about it. Um, so well, I think Forsen. Forsen has certainly had a day. Yes. Kibler didn't know he was going to make it to the I, final. I think Forsen will add Paladin most likely. You can make that a pretty aggressive deck. You can make a mid-range deck. But I think he's going to realize, okay, that's a pretty strong deck I missed out on. As far as Kibler, I think Kibler pretty much hit the nail on the head with the Shaman and Paladin picks. Uh, so maybe his fourth pick might be like a, a Warlock deck. But at the same time, I don't like Warlock. Because of Forsen's aggressive well. decks. Yeah, the Forsen has... Locks, they haven't performed. I'd actually like to see maybe like a warrior deck even. Just kind of going back to those Warwind effects. They're all yeah. playable. They're all pretty strong. We kind of talked about you can actually play the patron deck minus Despite, which is pretty important. But Yeah, but at the same time, you can't really remove a patron with you anything. You can't remove patrons. Yeah, you were talking about if you just play Unstable Ghoul into patron... That's just game against some decks. Yeah. So maybe we'll see something like that. I would like to see something anti-aggro out of Kibler, and I'd like to see Paladin out of Forsen. 
Yeah, I think you nailed it. Um, I think at this stage, the players kind of know what the other one's playing quite well. Uh, they're really playing into that rather than just a general deck against the field. They're no longer against the field. They're in the final match. And uh, that's exactly what we can expect for, uh, from them. Uh, Paladin certainly seems to be like the strongest option uh, that Forsen can play. I don't exactly remember his classes, but I do remember he had uh, quite some regret for not picking Paladin already. So uh, I'm sure those, uh, those wheels were turning already. Uh, as for Kibler, uh, I, don't, I don't really think that Kibler would really go to Warrior straight off the bat, uh, just because yeah. it seems like uh, a little bit of a risk. Uh, no one's really tried it. It's some not things, tried, yeah. Yeah. Like, so, from Forsen's perspective, mm -hmm. he's like, okay, Paladin's great. I know that for a fact. Let's go with right. it. Kibler's kind of like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. We've we've seen Kibler play uh, Hunter in the past. Um, I think you can actually make maybe even a defensive Hunter deck if you throw some some taunts in there. The Unleash is, is a very good comeback mechanic. Uh, I don't know. Maybe even Dragon Hunter could add his existing lineup. I'd say his choice is certainly much more flexible and much more unpredictable than Forsen's. Um, but uh, we'll see. The players will have uh, a little bit of time. I think we're going to take a break for about five minutes while the players get their uh, final deck uh, complete for the best of seven finals coming after this. And uh, yeah, should be pretty fun stuff. Yeah. For a break, uh, head over to geico.onog.gg. And you can enter the raffle, but we'll see you guys in five minutes. <laughs> 